This is a no expenses spared 1970 Pontiac GTO. I'm gonna tell you all about this thing. Nineteen sixty four was also a pivotal year in the auto industry, especially as the spirit of nonconformity inspired a brash engineer at Pontiac. John DeLorean is one of those iconic names. All right, so the GTO, it's an OG muscle car. Well, this one started off as a original four fifty five HO car couple different options with uh, HD battery, air cleaner, whatnot. This thing turned into a complete pile. It had a disgusting spoiler on it. I don't think you can see it in those pictures, but there was so much to comb over on this thing as far as what it's gone through to get to this point. All these pictures, albums, I've combed through all this paperwork and I just wanted to share a few pictures of the frame-off rotisserie that this thing went through. And it was very extensive. It took a couple years for this uh, Great Lakes Motor Works, I believe, up in uh, northern Michigan to complete the job. And they did impeccable work. This thing came out looking fantastic. I mean, paint came off of every panel, everything was redone. And you can see here, that frame is magnificent. Under the hood, we got a rock and roll engineering King Street 455. It's 30 over, forged steel rods, pistons, uh, 850 Mighty Demon on top with rock and roll engineering's Edelbrock heads. Everything's been polished and it's beautiful. They got a cone 700 R4 with a cone converter. I'm not sure what the stall is. I couldn't find that in any of the paperwork. And that's all plugged into a 342 GM 12 bolt and like any build there was a few issues with it he complained about bottom end power like coming off the line so as you can see here with my fat ass hand in the way there was a spacer on this thing uh, it's a dual plane intake but it had a wide open spacer that intake doesn't work really well with a wide open spacer because it slows down the fuel and air mixture velocity on its way down into the intake. So I took that out, laid the carb straight on the intake, and it gets a lot more grunt down low. The crank pulley here was a bit of a mess. That thing was extremely loose and it chewed up that belt only after about maybe a thousand miles. So I pulled it back into the shop. This is after I just fixed the car. Didn't really notice this, but I put it up on the lift and sure enough, she was super sloppy. I actually used uh, the O-ring from a cuff of a rubber glove to square it up for me. guys with a couple swooping shots here and then the interior which was all custom built for this guy he absolutely loves this interior he's infatuated with the leather steering wheel for some reason but this car is beautiful man and that's really all i got until the next one thanks